Right, this is Mark Dodd's uh, People's Pet Partnership, one of the, one of the, got to look around, the walls have ears, one of the pub persuaders, one of the pub professionals, one of the people who knows what's going on, and uh, something weird's going on in the British pub industry, I'm sure you've noticed, you're a customer, you're a person who goes out, you drink, you uh, enjoy yourselves, you like going to pubs, you like socializing you like meeting them meeting in pubs you are they're an iconic part of britain's heritage and they're part of the fabric of life in britain really and um you kind of noticed you kind of avoided noticing that they're closing everywhere and they're boarded up it's been going on for a long time it's getting worse and it's called the great british pub coast scam behind the scenes and uh quite frankly oops quite frankly it uh, seems to be a bit of a mystery to lots of people. And uh, I write a blog. It's called They Got Me Over a Barrel. And on that, I occasionally put things on about what's going on in the pub sector. And um, anonymous posters come along and they start saying, oh, uh, I, I, I kind of say stuff which sounds a bit like I just blame the beer tie for everything. Now, the fact is, if you've got a pub that is part of the beer tie, it is undoubtedly paying much more for its beer than any pub that's not part of the tie generally two times double the price it's, 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 it's mind blowing it's so mind blowing no one believes it really until they're a publican paying double the price for the beer and the rents are usually much higher than standard open market rents because the pub sector has been dominated by tied pub companies for so long they've, uh, they've more pubs than anybody else put together and they've got their own market really they've established their own market for rent, rent valuations and um there are no comparisons outside of it, and the pub sector uh, just manages to come up with tide rents that are unfeasibly high, and it makes pubs fail. So I'm, here I am, I'm in Berwick on Tweed, and uh, trying things out on this camera. Got to get used to talking to camera. I'm in a park, I'm in a car park, which is free. Berwick on Tweed is on its arse economically. We're in. Um, Something like the 16th of July now, and holiday season's coming at the full swing. Population here increases by about 110,000 every summer. Its normal population of indigenous people is around 16,000, very small. It's got, it's a beautiful town. It's got elements of, might sound weird, but it reminds me of a place called Lucca in Italy, which is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And Berwick feels a lot like that except half its shops are closed and the shops that are open are pounds, uh, you know, cheap shit. And um, it has medieval walls, which are actually designed by the same guy who did the medieval walls around Lucca. And uh, Lucca and Berwick's medieval walls are the best intact of the period. And they were, at the time they were very high tech, considered to be very high tech, never tested out. Uh, supposedly impenetrable, it never retests really out in war. And uh, here we are, there's a legacy on the borders of Britain in this beautiful beautiful town called Berwick, uh, where all the pubs are broken, pretty much. There's some poncy ones which are a bit expensive and they're not that good. And um, just round a corner from here, this car park is uh, a new phenomenon in British pub sector. It's called a micro pub, it's called the Curfew, nice name. It's been open for three weeks. Apparently, it's doing very well, and I'm going to try and go in there and give it a go and see what's uh, see what's happening and see if I can, see if I can talk to somebody and find out what they what they're doing, why they did it, and how it's going. All right.